Laura Shihai is a, an assistant professor of clinical psychology at the George Washington University's professional psychology program, where she is the founding faculty director of the psychoanalysis and the Arab world lab. Lara's work takes up decolonial and anti-oppressive approaches to psychoanalysis with a focus on liberation struggles in the global South. She is co-author with Stephen Shihai of Psychoanalysis Under Occupation, Practicing Resistance in Palestine, which won the Middle East Monitor's 2022 Palestine Book Award for Best Academic Books. Thanks again, Katie, for, for sure. providing the space to speak about this. And I think this is part of what's really important. Um, you had mentioned that I'm the subject of the Title VI complaint, and I think this is part of it, is that the Title VI complaint by Stand With Us was filed with the Department of Education against George Washington University. Right, okay, part so of you're what, not the subject. Right, but, you know, in keeping with their strategy uh, of sort of whipping up a hate campaign and a smear campaign, they redacted everybody's name but mine. And so okay. a lot of the ways in which the hate and spirit smear campaign has spread like wildfire, particularly in the right wing blogosphere, is precisely because they redacted everybody's name but mine, making the appearance or sort of making it seem like this was specifically done by me. And that is a playbook that they follow. Uh, Stand With Us is not a new entity to those of us who work on Palestine, nor to human rights organizations or for organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace who have been following their tactics for quite some time. So um, that is the beginning of the story for me. And you know, in early January, Stand With Us filed a complaint, redacted, again, redacted everybody's name but mine. And very quickly, this moved and became uh, a sort of global uh, thing, in, in especially in the right-wing blogosphere. What's really important about this uh, case is that it really follows a strategy of collapsing, in this case, my scholarship on Palestine or my advocacy for human rights of Palestinians outside the classroom with what retroactively Stand With Us would like to make the claim that that is also what happened in my class. That is categorically incorrect. And I think instead what they set up is a situation where myself as an Arab and particularly as an Arab woman, again, not new to me, having to prove in the public eye that I am not anti-Semitic as a, as a condition, as a precondition to any conversation. And so that is part of what they rely on, right? And if I didn't work on Palestine, if I didn't advocate for human rights, particularly around Palestine, this wouldn't be a story. But it is a story because it's an easy target for them. Um, at the heart of this is a voluntary brown bag that uh, eminent professor of, at the Hebrew University, an Israeli citizen herself, Nadija Shalhub Kavrukian, came to GW. It was part of a launch of a psychoanalysis in the Arab World Lab that I had just launched at George Washington University. And two students particularly um, were took umbrage with that uh, with that. Uh, brown bag and then proceed and a brown bag just for people who aren't in academia or are, haven't attended one of those that's kind of like an informal chat right exactly it's meant to be it was called brown bag because usually you bring your lunch in a brown bag right. <laughs> you know um so we had this end uh, you know we took care it was off site of our program precisely because i understand in working with this i understand the affective charge that brown bags like this might bring and so took ample measures to not make this mandatory, all the sorts of things, but but to make it important for our students as clinicians. One of the important things about this is that I am a, a, a professor of clinical psychology in a graduate program. What that means is that I am training clinical psychologists who have an ethical imperative to know about these things, to know about what is happening in the name of mental health. Nadira's talk was precisely about our tendency or potential to fall into the traps to mental health wash state projects, regardless of who those states are. Hers happened to be the state of Israel because she's an Israeli citizen. And also she's using research that is two Israeli professors have talked about, particularly in the case of Africa and Israeli, um, Israeli sort of advocacy in the context of Africa around this stuff. So that is part of what's really important here. And the classroom is misrepresented, of course, in this claim by Stand With Us because it's not in their best intention to release 
what I believe is a um, is an audio taping of this classroom, something that we know Stand With Us does, something that we know they train students to do. Um, and they, if they were to release that transcript, that it would be easy to see that what their claims are are categorically incorrect. And in fact, what is really disturbing is that the exact opposite happened, right? The level of sort of uh, collapsing uh, any sort of position on the, the state of Israel with anti-Semitism, but also just to make it clear, that was not the content of my course. So what is now, that's what I mean about a retroactive narrative that's being placed on this whole entire thing and sort of bringing together anecdotal data with my scholarship and saying, this must be what happened in the classroom. And instead, what is emerging is a categorically false uh, allegation that I retaliate against students, particularly Jewish students and Israeli students. Um, one thing of great disturbance to me is a collapse of all Jewish students in that classroom. I have right. many Jewish students across cohorts, um, many of whom don't see themselves represented in this filing and who themselves are being silenced as a, as a, as a result of this, but also no attention being paid to the damage done particularly to Arabs, Muslims, and Palestinians in that class and across GW campus as a result of this, and also towards uh, Black folks in the class because there was a rhetoric of anti-Blackness that was unacceptable in any situation in a classroom, but especially for trainees of clinical psychology. George Washington looked into this, right? They did their own investigation? Mm -hmm. Yes, and they, yes. And what did they find and what, what's the status now? Yeah. So over the course of the semester last year, there was a, many steps that I was working very closely with my program chair, with the deans to make sure to de-escalate any potential situation. It is uh, it is my ethical duty to make sure that every student can learn in my classroom. And it's my ethical duty also to train ethical clinicians. And so it was in my best interest to work alongside my department and the deans to make sure that this was happening. There was a series of um, unfortunate and discriminatory acts towards me by the university, by the administration. I filed two DEI complaints. A colleague of mine filed a DEI complaint on my behalf as well that were not attended to. So that's the real story here that is not being picked up. At the end of the semester, it was shown that there was no wrongdoing on my behalf. And the only correct thing in that filing is that students did not get special accommodations. That is the only correct thing in that filing. Um, but that also shows us that retaliation didn't happen, that everything was done, in fact, went above and beyond what we usually do with any sorts of complaints that are similar to this. The university hired an external consultant to come in and attend to this. They spent money at a time when they are saying there is no money to be spent uh, to attend to this. The other thing that I really want to say is the claims of retaliation um, are also baseless because this class is a zero credit course. And what that means for anybody who teaches and who doesn't teach is that a zero credit course doesn't load onto somebody's GPA. So that immediately sort of the idea of retaliation, you can't retaliate if there is no sort of a direct impact on students and nobody in that class got less than an A. So mm. again, the bad faith of the complaint sort of uh, becomes much more clear around that. But the bottom line is GW found no wrongdoing. And then within a day of this filing, George Washington University decided to hire a third party investigator uh, to look into this claim. Why this is chilling and why so many academics across the board are really rallying behind me and showing their concern is because this preempts the Department of Education. It moves quicker <laughs> than the Department of Education could ever move. Within one day, you had said, you had declared that you were going to do a third party investigation. I think for me also, what's really concerning about this is there are two ways this can, you know, shake out. One, this is going to get to the point where you are sent, setting a precedent that any university, when there's a complaint like this, that you are going to preempt the only adjudicating body that can sort of take care of this and hire an external investigator before the Department of Education says anything, or as we have seen with the case of George Washington, show us that Palestine is really an exception because on February 14th, Palestine Legal filed a Title VI complaint on behalf of three Palestinian students across the university 
with claims such as being denied access to mental health services when GW shut down trauma services for Palestinian students. Um, they also document a growing sort of trend of extreme disciplinary action towards Palestinian students. And here we are, what are we, February 28th today? There has mm -hmm. been no hiring of a third party investigator. And so mm -hmm. as we feared, this shows us again that Palestine is an exception when it comes to these issues, not only in terms of academic freedom, but also in how quickly uh, a university will move or potentially cave to political pressures as we see.